Hello, and welcome back to the PNY Pro Podcast. My name is Jerome, and I'm here with my co-host, Derek Ellis. And today, we're here with Quinn McCullough from New Dream. How's it going, Quinn? Good. How are you guys doing? We're great. So can you give the audience a quick overview of New Dream? Yeah, yeah. New Dream is a computer and IT solutions provider, and we're also the host of our brand, uh, Velstorm, which is a system integrator as well that focuses on the desktop build side of things and more uh, components like what PNY does. Nice. Yeah. In, in terms of just doing, you know, desktops and workstations, we're talking a little bit before we started here, you know, in terms of like pro solutions, you know, what, what do you offer at New Dream in the pro side of things? Yeah. In the pro side of things, we focus primarily on those, those pro cards, the GPUs that PNY makes. Um, those are really kind of tailored uh, really well for things like 3D modeling, AutoCAD, uh, rendering, video compression, uh, encoding, all those things, uh, as well as uh, AI focused as well. The amount of VRM is really helpful for, you know, as we catapult into this AI age, uh, very desirable thing to have on your side when you're uh, working with it on hardware. AI is definitely the, the hot topic and it's been, it's taken over. And I, I guess from that perspective, from the pro side, do you, do you offer, you know, Ada generation and Ampere generation GPUs? Or are you focused on one or kind of like what's been your, your sweet spot in terms of pro GPUs? Primarily when we started it, I kind of wanted to be accessible to a wide variety of things. Um, and so we saw really big success from anywhere at the A2000 uh, level all the way up to the, you know, the A6000, the really popular expensive one. Um, and so we kind of try to hit that range, whether you're only working in video editing or whether you're really trying to push the deep learning agenda. Um, you know, we kind of offer all those things. And, and the biggest benefit to that is people are able to come to us from, you know, all those different walks of software usage and, and we can give them a solution that works for them. I know even off podcast, we were talking about things that you do kind of day to day. When it comes to content creation, how does that take place within what you do? Does AI kind of lend a hand into that as well? Yeah. So I'm a I'm the brand operations manager for Velstorm primarily. And so I kind of manage the whole brand underneath New Dream. Um, and, you know, we have our one uh, big unit that we use the PNY card in for all of our video work. Um, and I actually handle with our photographer all of our video editing and, uh, as you can imagine, it takes up a lot of my time. And so the one thing that makes it easier is kind of using uh, one, a card that's really strong, like a PNY Pro um, card. So we use the, the RTX A6000. Um, it's an absolute monster. And that kind of helps take over a lot of the load for any kind of encoding that we're using because we do film and encode in 8K, um, which takes a while. Uh, so we're able to do that really fast. And then we can use uh, general AI overlay to kind of quick edit a lot of the extra stuff out. Um, and that saves us a, a mountain of time, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, and Quinn, you mentioned earlier too about the solutions you went down to like the A2000, which I know is like a small form factor GPU. It's like one of my favorites. And then they recently launched, you know, the, the 2008 variant of it. And you also have mm -hmm. a 4000 um, SFF small form factor. So do you offer you know, small form factor solutions as well for um, your customers? We do, actually. Um, we have a uh, VFX client that um, we just started working with recently, maybe in the past year or so. And it's been a really good time to kind of get to know their needs um, and really understand those. And the small form factor is really important for them. Uh, they really want to save on desk space while still allowing people to get the most amount of work done with the most amount of power in their system. And so they have those kind of small form factor options between the A2000 and the 4000 are really great for them. Um, and so I think we're going to kind of start to continually see that on our rise as like the mini PC uh, desire continues to grow. Even with the release of the new A1000 and even the A400, you know, that's small form factor. So that can definitely lend a hand into what you guys are making and implementing. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I guess from solution wise too, uh, as it sounds like you, you offer everything. So in terms of like markets, you know, what, what markets do you guys like touch on and just, you know, again, provide the solutions based off of those needs? I mean, you have media entertainment, you have healthcare, you have EDU. I mean, those are like the three monsters amongst like AECO and manufacturing. Like, are you able to configure systems, you know, within those specific markets? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, I would say 
healthcare is a tough one. They're pretty, uh, you know, pinpoint on what they need. Um, but outside of healthcare, I, I think ADU government, um, you know, CNC manufacturing, even we've had a couple uh, steel companies that we've worked with that use it. Um, I've worked with a, a client that does all the uh, PVC design work for a bigger manufacturer. And so they really needed some powerful machines to kind of pull them through on that kind of rendering and and uh, CAD work. And so I, I'd say that we've gone after a lot of those big ones to really try and help them and provide good solutions. And then, you know, on the simpler end of things, EDU is always, is always um, uh, nice because you know that you're supporting, you know, learning in the next generation. Is there any like specific testimonials or something that you really feel like, wow, like, I can't believe we really made an impact in this way within the healthcare or media and entertainment, or is there something that really kind of sticks out to you when working with these different partners? Yeah, that's another great question. Um, I think media and entertainment is definitely the biggest one. Um, I'm a huge movie lover. Um, and so that's that's something that I really enjoy doing in my free time and kind of working with clients on the backside of that that need these machines and and are the ones doing all of that cinematic work. Um, seeing the power that goes into them that can really make up these beautiful uh, scenes that come to fruition on the big screen is is really uh, cool to see that happen. And it's also really cool to be able to provide them with that, you know, hardware that helps them do their work. Yeah, yeah. Every market has like their own like cool point. But yeah, media entertainment, it's definitely one of those that's fun because as you mentioned, just you have these massive LED walls that are now being utilized to where before mm -hmm. like in production sets, you'd have to fly your cast out, go on sites where now... You can be in one location and change it in real time. You know, something that I demoed at GTC, we kind of like showcase real time rendering with Da Vinci. And it was amazing because you can actually go through scenes, move stuff around, move objects around and hit play. And that object sticks where you, you, where you left it. And just from a, a massive scale, it's it's definitely a game changer. So within that, I mean, media entertainment and for your for your solutions, uh, again, like you said, these walls and stuff need a high performance type of computer or system. Some of them even running like clusters of GPUs. Is that something as well that you can provide for someone like within that market that's running just say a, a big LED wall and needs that, you know, memory and, you know, the, the CUDA RT cores and a lot to help? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, mild flex, the biggest machine that we've done for somebody was the 512 gigabytes of RAM, 5995 Threadripper, and then uh, four A6000s in it um, with nice. a 1600 watt power supply to run them all. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, uh, it was pretty beefy, but yeah, it's definitely one of those machines. And that was, that was for that uh, media and entertainment sector. You know, they said they needed something that was the absolute bleeding edge uh, for what they were going to do. And and we gave it to them and we haven't heard anything since. So that means it went well, right? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely good. <laughs> yeah, No news is good news. Is there a reason why you guys would, you know, recommend a specific card like, a, you know, 5,000 ADA over 6,000 ADA in these builds? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I actually uh, spent about a month of research kind of making a, what I lovingly call a correlation table. And that kind of outlines everything that each level of those PMY pros were going to be used for. And so kind of starting at the low end from just a little baby T1000, if you need a display output versus all the way up to the eight to 6,000. And we kind of brought in what would work at each solution level. Like I said earlier, we kind of tried to cover everything. And so we started at the bottom and went very simple. Like you're going to be doing all CPU single thread based tasks. Here's, you know, the low A2000 is all you're going to need. Um, as much as I would love to give everybody an A6000, uh, I don't think that that's feasible either for me or for their budget. So deciding whether they're going to be working in multi-threaded tasks or GPU heavy workload is the first thing to kind of figure out. And then going from there, okay, how heavy is that workload going to be? Are you working in deep learning? Are you working in AI where you need to throw, you know, something really hard at 96 gigs of VRAM? Or are you only working in just simple rendering and a small form factor card will do the work for you? So basically you kind of have like a checklist of what is needed and then you kind of provide them with that solution from there. Yeah, yeah. I try to get the best understanding I can. There's so much out there that I still don't even know. And so I've it's been learning, working with a variety of clients and then, uh, just finding out what their needs are is the first step and and kind of what performance they're going to need and then going from there for sure. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of 
even just the latest ADA generation, because around C rep time, that's when they announced like the three uh, additional cards and kind of like really extend this whole product portfolio. And it's great because like you said, you just not everyone needs an A6000 or the 6000 ADA. Everything is really going to be based off of their workflow and, you know, what they're doing. And the, the recent, you know, A1000, A400, the more that entry level now gives you the, you know, the RT cores that were on the old, you know, T1000 or T400 cards. Now you have a full stack to where it's your A400 all the way up to the 6000 ADA in that in between, you know, your 5000, 4000 and all of that. And even a single slot solution, it's like you pretty much have anything you need based off of any workload out there, which is awesome. And, you know, within ADA Lovelace, it's the latest and greatest architecture. So it's, yeah, it's quite amazing to see like the advancements we're making each um, generation. And with that said, I mean, Computex, we just, just came up with Computex. Was there anything there that kind of got you excited at all? Yeah, uh, that's a, you know, us nerds, we love Computex. It's yeah, a big time of year. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I think a big excitement, obviously, with AI being the buzz is, you know, AMD uh, did announce their Epic line. And I think alongside of that, all of the new dies that they're going to be working on are going to pair really well going down to the Threadripper systems with the new Threadrippers coming out, um, kind of sitting those with uh, with PNY Pro Cards is going to be a really fun thing for me to do. And then, um, you know, I really hope that uh, our clients are going to enjoy that as well, because the amount of power that's going to be coming behind these new chips with the with the ADA backed behind it is going to be uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So Quinn, recently we've partnered with Pico to introduce AR and VR into PNY's lineup. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you guys might implement this? Yeah, I know we were talking about the the Pico a little bit outside of the podcast, but um, I think VR and AR headsets are going to, you know, AR technology, VR headsets are going to really start kind of becoming more mainstream as we go forward. I mean, you have things that all these big billionaires with all this time on their hands are making whole VR worlds now. So I, I think, you know, the, it's something that's going to become a little more mainstream, especially as we start to get the power and the hardware going forward. Um, you're going to start to see a lot of these demanding rendering tasks to pull up whole VR backgrounds, AR backdrops, anything like that. And like Derek was saying, you know, really keeping one thing in its place and switching the whole background, like that's already starting to approach that point. Um, and so we really want to kind of start to get our toes wet, uh, so to say, in, in the, the VR and the AR specific realm. Uh, we have worked with just VR ready machines and VR based rendering machines in the past, but I think that there's still more to be had from that as, you know, technology advances and things kind of move forward. And so uh, that is something that we really want to look forward to providing in the future and, and, you know, whatever variety of way it presents itself. Yeah. And the Pico, it is, it's, it's a, it's an awesome solution. I got to, you know, get my hands on pretty much all their models. And the one thing I absolutely love, it's like an all in one solution. I remember just five years ago, it's just, you know, you wouldn't need your desktop or a laptop, HDMI, you know, plug it in and everything like that to where now it's just, it's all in the headset. From the last time I used VR to actually putting the Pico headset on, just that feeling of being immersed into the environment, you know, you don't have any bleeding on the outside in terms of light coming through and just the visuals of it. It's a night and day difference. And just, yeah, Jerome and I were kind of playing with Pico, the 4E Enterprise, and they have stuff where you can do simulations and just training and stuff like that. So it's it's one of those things that we're talking about earlier, Quinn, just touching all these different markets, even from a desktop, but now even from a VR, XR uh, type of product to take it even, like you said, to the next step. Yeah, we're excited for you to try it out and, and hear your thoughts because I I think you're going to love it. They're they're great headsets. And I mean, Pico did a good job. And I mean, pretty much on pretty much anywhere from the, the entry level G3 up to the Pico 4 Enterprise. One of the things that we were able to try out in using the Pico 4 Enterprise was being able to use it in this medical setting in where, you know, they were doing training and they were saying, hey, someone just got cut. We need you to perform emergency, you know, help for this person. And then it would say like, hey, take the gauze, take the, the bandages, hold it on this person's arm for this amount of seconds, take off the ice. You know, it, it was very immersive. So I feel like these training situations, especially in, you know, different markets like healthcare, or even as we said, like media and entertainment, this can definitely be used in all these different circumstances. So again, I think it'd be great for you to try it as well.
Yeah, I'm looking forward to to trying it. Like you said, that that kind of healthcare situation or any level of training. I mean, you see, you know, flight sims, driving sims. I mean, they just made a movie about, you know, the the Gran Turismo sim. So I, I think that there's a reality there where those two things start to come together a lot closer. And and those kind of simulations in a VR situation get you ready for the real thing if you can't access the real thing right away. So Quinn, that's a great episode. So do you have any final thoughts? Nothing too crazy. It's been really great having me on and, and talking with you guys about this stuff. And I'm really excited coming off of Computex and going through the rest of 2024 to kind of see what what we see the rest of this year and, and what PMY has in store as well. And yeah, thanks again. Hey, Quinn, it, like you said, it was great to have you on the podcast and we'd love to have you on a future episode. Thank you so much for your time and just for you and giving us a little deep dive into New Dream and also uh, Veldstorm and just Again, being able to show our audience what you offer and it's a, another option out there for you. So thanks again and definitely look forward to having another episode in the future. And for all of you out there who's a visual person like me, go check out PMY Pro on YouTube where if you can watch the actual video or you can listen to the podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. That concludes this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.